Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's move on to talking a bit about native biodiverse reforestation, why it's important, and some of the bottlenecks that require solving. As we're all aware, native forests foster biodiversity. They enhance ecosystem health and facilitate the provision of critical ecosystem services and enhance human quality of life. While conversely, monocultures or plantation forests generally do not confer these benefits. Additionally, these monocultures and plantations are expected to have a much lower resilience potential due to increasing incidence of drought, pests, diseases, et cetera, as climate continues to change. Yeah, just bear with me for a second. Let me share my screen. Yeah, despite all of this, did you know that almost half of all areas allocated for reforestation involve large monocultures or plantations? In fact, many public and private sector organizations are not planting native biodiverse forests in their restoration projects. Instead, nearly 50% of government reforestation commitments involve the planting of monocultures or a small mix of trees that produce profitable commodities such as fruit and rubber, but which do not restore natural forests. And these, apart from compromising biodiversity, also tend to have negative impacts on ecosystem services. For example, they have very large water footprints, which may impact water availability to local communities. Such establishment of monoculture or plantations is more and more being concentrated across the tropics and subtropics within some of the most biodiverse territories of emerging nations, such as South America, Asia, Southeast Asia, and Africa. And there are several drivers for this. First of all, there is, the, there is the use of broad definitions and confusing terminology, which has resulted in misleading communication and maladaptive action. For example, many plantations meet the FAO's definition of a forest. That is any area that is greater than 0.5 hectares, that has uh, trees above five meters high and which have more than 10% canopy cover. But the fact is this definition is extremely inadequate as it excludes key components of climate change mitigation and biodiversity protection. And while plantations may not be seen as economically important in some sectors, there have been calls for them not to be classified as forests, while, and for this definition to be overhauled to exclude monoculture plantations. There are also economic drivers, such as the developing carbon mar market system which focuses attention on the accruement of carbon while biodiversity takes a back seat, with reforestation being looked at mainly in the short term. Also, because monoculture plantations are cheaper to plant and easier to maintain, a lot of countries are investing heavily in planting monocultures instead of native uh, biodiverse forests. And this continues to perpetuate the trend of native reforestation not being well compensated for its biodiversity and ecosystem services. The fact is, despite investors and businesses increasingly investing in green initiatives, very low cash flows are being directed towards native biodiverse reforestation. And this remains a major barrier, which is continuing because carbon markets today are not structured to account for or reward for biodiversity and ecosystem services. And neither do they penalize for the extra water and emissions from fertilizers used by monoculture plantations. <clears throat> but there are also some little known and emerging facts about uh, carbon sequestration. First of all, although in the short term monoculture plantations may accumulate carbon faster, native biodiverse forests sequester more carbon in the long term. Secondly, when it comes to carbon capture, the rate of carbon capture has been shown to be more consistent in native biodiverse forests, especially during drought conditions which by the way, are expected to increase in several areas with changing climate. Third, carbon storage in native biodiverse forests may become more and more secure compared to monoculture plantations as climate continues to change. And that's because native biodiverse forests are much more resilient to increasing environmental fluctuations, pests, diseases, extreme events, et cetera, which are expected to occur with climate change. And then also in terms of benefit to local communities, Native biodiverse forests provide a larger range of social and economic benefits. For example, <clears throat> a greater range of livelihood options, such as food, medicine, 
ecotourism, etc., which can more holistically sustain local communities and importantly confer resilience from fluctuations and lo in, in local and global markets. <clears throat> there are also other bottlenecks that are working against native biodiversity reforestation. You see, in general, when we think about reforestation, most of us tend to envision the actual planting of trees. And often we forget that, that there are other critical aspects such as seed availability, water availability, the underground technical requirements and the actual financing that are needed to plant these forests. But the fact is reforesting with a, with a biodiverse mix of native species costs more. And there's a lack of physical and human infrastructure that are required to support such native uh, forest restoration. For example, access to native seeds and forestry talent who understand local ecology. Secondly, there is also a native seed availability problem, which is another little known but absolutely critical bottleneck. You see, it is becoming more and more difficult to obtain native seeds in degraded forests as well as uh, normal forests. And this problem is expected to intensify with increased frequencies of drought, forest die-offs, wildfires, and other climate catastrophes. It is therefore increasingly likely that trees recovering um, within recovering forests may not have enough time to, um, to mature and produce seeds before yet being hit uh, by another uh, destructive event. As such, native forest planters may have to depend more and more on seed banks to store and access increasingly precious seeds. But over half of the world's countries do not even have seed banks. And with those that do, most of, most of these tend to be underfunded. <clears throat> in synopsis, ladies and gentlemen, the majority of reforestation initiatives today are being viewed through a short-term, mainly economic lens, driving policymakers and forest planters towards monocultures and plantations, which use fast-growing, often non-native species, and as these are seen as more competitively um, beneficial in terms of economics. But while these practices may provide short-term economic returns through timber, carbon credits, et cetera, they ignore the long-term consequences, they lack sustainability, and they inhibit the full potential of forests with respect to adaptation, mitigation, and climate resilience. Thank you so much. <laughs>